Hello, this is Jeffrey Tiefertiller, back with another Service Management Leadership video. Today's video is the eighth in our series on ITIL Problem Management. There are many versions of problem management, and we want to take an ITIL-centric view. This video, we, I want to discuss verifying the problem has been resolved and closing out that problem record. In the last video, we talked about making the change into production and what that might look like, always using change management process. But I want to encourage you, don't be so don't be in such a hurry. Don't rush to close a problem record because the underlying problem may still be there and it may be very complex. You may be thinking you're solving the problem and you're really solving the symptom. We've all been there, haven't we? And we just need to make sure we keep that open. Because one of our metrics in problem management should be how many times do we reopen a problem record? We hope it's zero. But let's give an example where this may play out. A server crashes daily. That's bad. And it appears to be a memory utilization issue. Okay. The memory is added and the daily crashes go away. But really did it. Was the problem really solved? We need to wait and verify it. Because what happens if a week later, it goes down again? Then you're like, uh-oh, is it the same problem or is it a new one? That's why if you have the same problem record open, it's easy to, to pick up where you were and try other options, other solutions. And each time a change is implemented, the results should be monitored. It's kind of like when you go to the doctor, they make a change in medication, they give you some type of surgery, they monitor you. It's the same thing. And so once we've verified that the change went into production and it, it solved the problem, then we can close the problem record, right? We can communicate the results to the, the stakeholders. We can make sure that everything is buttoned up. But the other thing we need to do is we need to communicate this to our knowledge management, whether it's an official knowledge management system, repository, whatever it is. We need to update this resolution. Because what happens if the, the, call, the service desk gets a call on the exact issue? You need to know that it's related to that problem, don't you? I think you would. Because in the server case, what happens if that same server gets an incident the next day? We need to figure out a way, knowledge management is, to bundle all those conversations into one so things are not left open for periods of time without any kind of understanding. And knowledge management allows different people to contribute, different people to help with the understanding so we can we can know for the long term, this is what solved that problem when it comes up. This is what did not solve that problem. Those sort of things. Because if we have a memory issue on one server, we might have it on another one someday. And we need to know, hey, what, what was it that helped last time? It's that sort of thought process. This is Jeffrey T. Tiller. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel, Service Management Leadership. Please like or share the video. Subscribe to our channel, leave me feedback below, or feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, and I hope you have a great, great day. Bye.